Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our texts, our texts, plural, for our consideration tonight are all the texts that were read tonight in this service. And obviously, if you haven't caught on already, the theme is bread, the bread of life. And I was thinking about this. I think there's probably nothing that smells better in the air of a kitchen than freshly baked bread. I can remember visiting my grandparents. They just lived across the street. But I especially loved it when I walked into the kitchen and I could smell freshly baked bread. Wow, that fragrance can fill the house. It actually creates an appetite. We eat bread almost every day when you think about it. It's a daily food staple. We enjoyed it at breakfast with toast or bagels or maybe even a Danish. We enjoy it with sandwiches at lunch and dinner rolls at supper time. Bread is as important today as it was throughout history. To have bread is to be rich. To be without it is to be poor. When you enter the church on a communion Sunday, you were invited to smell, touch, and taste some unleavened bread to remind you again of the simple yet wonderful ways God still touches our lives. Bread is one of God's promised treasures, and that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Now, before the Israelites left Egypt by the hand of God, they were told to make unleavened bread to take with them on their journey. It had no yeast, and that meant it wouldn't have cause to rise or to spoil. However, as they were traveling, soon the bread was running out, as tonight's first reading indicated. People of Israel were wondering and grumbling about how and where they would get more bread. The Lord told Moses that he would rain down bread from heaven for them. God kept that word. He soon provided a layer of thin flakes on the desert floor for the Israelites to collect every morning and feed their families. They were also told only to collect enough for the day and nothing more. However, some did collect more, and when they did, it became smelly and full of maggots by the next morning. In today's third reading, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He reminded the people that it wasn't Moses who gave bread every day. It was God. God sustained their lives day in and day out with more manna. Which, by the way, and we talked about this in Bible class, the word manna literally means, what is it? <laughs> they couldn't think of a name for it, so they just call it, what is it? Manna. Jesus reminded all who listened to him that God sustained all people with physical bread. But only he can give bread that is eternal life. The Father provided eternal life through the bread of heaven standing right in front of them. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. Now the Bible doesn't simply equate loaves of bread with physical life. No, it equates Jesus Christ as the only source of spiritual life. That is why St. Paul said Israel was led by Christ in the Old Testament. Our fathers, he said, all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The final source for all the manna the Israelites ate and all the water they drank was the Son of God, 
Jesus Christ. And Jesus still leads and sustains his church. Until your life ends and you enter heaven, he still feeds you with the bread of his holy word and the bread of his holy sacrament. Jesus quoted Moses when he told Satan, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. St. Augustine, one of the early church fathers, a faithful early church father, described teaching the Bible like opening and breaking open a loaf of bread. I kind of like that idea. However, God's word is brought to you through scripture readings, whether it's that or a sermon, a poetic hymn, or even a devotion. It is all bread for your soul as long as it leads and points you to the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Now, we've talked about Moses and unleavened bread, and Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus also uses the bread of his holy sacrament to feed and sustain his church until he comes back again. Just a few verses following St. Paul's words regarding manna, he addresses the Lord's Supper. He says, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. The bread you eat from this table, whenever it is offered in a divine service, is not ordinary bread. It's not sandwich bread. No, when Christ's word is spoken over it, Jesus promises to place his very body into your body. To partake of this bread is to take Jesus Christ's true body into yourself. That's astounding, isn't it? Beyond, really, our comprehension. Like the Israelites of old, we journey in the wilderness of this life. We live in this sinful world under the heat of sin and death bearing down on us each and every day, just as the desert heat beat down on the Israelites. We're all waiting for the promised land, just as the, de just as the Israelites did. But it's not Canaan, it's heaven. No matter how crazy or bad life may be for you in this wilderness, you are not left wondering, where can I find help? True, help is found where Christ breaks open his word and offers holy food at this altar. We should be fed in the way God chooses to feed us through his word and his sacraments. Today our prayer is that may bread always remind you of God's rich love and his bounty for you. Bread is certainly a promised treasure. Not only does bread remind you of Jesus who gave up his flesh on the cross for you, but it reminds you of who you are now. You see, just as numerous grains of wheat grow and are ground up to make one loaf of bread, we, although many, are made one people by taking the bread of Christ at his altar. You are forgiven and baked into a new image on Easter. As the church, we are a new loaf, a new creation. Until Jesus comes again, you will always long for the bread which only God offers you in his son Jesus Christ, the very bread of life. Yes, daily bread is here today and gone tomorrow, but the bread of life, Jesus Christ, he lasts forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now stand.